Good morning. This morning's, re- Ooh, whoa. this morning's reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 25 through 34. <clears throat> About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for light, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He brought them out and asked, sirs, what what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately, he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. For the word of God and scripture and story, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. We give thanks. Thank you. 
Next scene. Scene work. And this is the baby right here, folks. This is what's changed the world in entertainment. Testing! It's working, good. You may have already heard, but for the first talking motion picture, we have the world's greatest movie star of silent film. 33 silent movies. She will be starring with us today. Will you please welcome the great actress Lena Lamont. Miss Lamont, this is it. I know it's the first time, but this is the baby right here. All right, now get ready for scene one announcement. Scene one, are we ready? ready. Cue, cue cards. Miss Lamont, just look right here. The camera will be looking right at you, okay? Go ahead. Announcement scene one. Action! Red pad. Take the red pad and print your name on it. Put down any other information you would like us to have. If you want to receive our emails, please print your email address. Then pass the pad to the other people on your row. Cut! 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 <laughs> You have a very resonant voice, Miss Lamont. Thank you. I think you could just soften it for the next scene. Just soften it just a little bit, okay? Lower that tone just a little bit. Ready? Here we go. Announcement scene two. Action! If you plan to attend Dansbury on a regular basis and don't have a name tag, we'd like to get one for you. Just print your name on the name tag board in the hall and we'll order one for you. Cut, 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 cut. <laughs> Very nice. Thank Very you. nice. <laughs> Just keep it a little softer, a little Sorry. more. That's right. Okay, let's try number three, okay? okay. Announcement three. Okay, scene four, last one. <laughs> Announcement scene four. was enough, thank you very much. <laughs> if you will, please turn off all cell phones as Miss Lamont has done. Miss Lamont, would you mind just coming over here for a minute, wait for me, we have one more scene to film. I'll be calling you back out. I want you to meet somebody, okay? Now the Christmas scene, can I have the Christmas players up here? Christmas scene for singing in the rain. Hurry, 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 let's go. Time is money, here we go. Christmas scene, take one. Speak. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Be sure to speak in the microphone right here. Okay? All right. 
Try it again. Christmas team, take one. Good morning. Action! Hey, come on back, David. Come on back. Wait till I say action. I know you've never experienced this before. This is a first. Christmas team, take one. Action! Good morning, everyone. So we are here from the Asbury Memorial Youth Group and we are selling Christmas trees this year and instead of just speaking, we decided to sing it because after all we are in a musical. So this is a parody to the tune of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Okay, you ready? Yeah. We love Billy and Claudette and Laura and Chris, the Tysons, Maria and our mascot Fizz. It's that time of year for the youth group that you hold so dear. Youth group is selling Christmas. Christmas. Trees and wreaths and garlands too. Lots of green things. We know that it's October. October. We don't care, so why should you? Happy Halloween. Buy all your Christmas green things. Green things. From the youth and Santa hat. Ho, ho, ho. Fill out the form completely. Completely. We take checks and cards and cash. Lots and lots of cash. Help us go on mission trips. Serving those in need. Help, help, help. Plus we're raising money for Hurricane Relief. Get in the Christmas spirit. Spirit. Buy a tree or wreath today. Woohoo! We know you love the youth group. Youth group. Love you too, what can we say? How's our sales pitch? Cut! Beautiful! Excellent, excellent job, excellent. Miss Lamont, could you please come here? <laughs> Mr. Rumpel, where are you, Mr. Rumpel? Miss Lamont, I would love for you to meet Mr. Fred Rumpel, a wonderful speech professor. <clears throat> he would like to have a session with you. Yes, now, Miss Lamont, let's get to work here, please. <clears throat> Can you repeat after me? Ta he chi to tu. Ta te chi to tu. Miss Lamont, round tones, round tones. Oh, let's move on. <clears throat> now, Miss Lamont, <sighs> let's work on that one line that we worked on all last week. So, repeat, say after me. And I can't stand him. And I can't stand him. <clears throat> <clears throat> can't. Haunt, haunt, haunt. Oh, Mr. Lockwood. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, let's work for you. Oh, please say after me. Around the rocks, the rugged rascal ran. Around the rocks, the no, rugged... No, 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 no. Rocks. Rocks. Around the rocks, the rugged rascal ran. Oh, very Oh, yes, 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 yes. Hi, Cos. Hi, Dad. Um, do you mind if I continue? Go ahead. No, please. Don't mind me. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'll try this one. Sinful Caesar snipped his snifter, sneezed his knees and sneezed. Sinful Caesar snipped his snifter. Snipped his snifter. Snipped his snifter. Why, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Sinful Caesar snipped 
His snifter seized his knees and sneezed. Oh, marvelous! Yes, that is wonderful! Wonderful! Oh, I'll, I'll try this one now. <clears throat> Theophilus Thistle, the successful thistle sifter, in a sifting scene full of unsifted thistles, thrust the three thousand thistles through the thick of his thumb. Now, if Theophilus Thistle, the successful thistle sifter, thrust three thousand thistles through the thick of his thumb, see that now, in a sifting scene full of unsifted thistles, thrust not three thousand thistles through the thick of thy thumb. Wonderful! Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. You're not... Oh, oh, yes. <clears throat> now, Moses supposes his toes are roses, but Moses supposes erroneously. As Moses noses his toes are roses, as Moses supposes his toes to be. Moses supposes his toes are roses. But Moses supposes erroneously. But Moses, he knows his poses aren't roses, <laughs> as Moses supposes his poses to be. Moses supposes his poses are roses, but Moses supposes erroneously. A mose is a mose. A rose is a rose. A toes is a toes. Whoop be doo be doo be Moses supposes. We open our time of prayer with a time of silence. This is a time for us to center ourselves as we do go to God in prayer. Please continue with me in an attitude of prayer. Gracious and loving God, giver of all good things, we are grateful for this day that you have made for us. You give to us abundantly, and we are grateful. We pray for those of our community of faith who cannot be with us this day. We especially pray for those who are hospitalized or homebound due to illness, unable to leave their homes. 
Comfort the lonely and relieve the fears of the fearful, whether that be patient or family, and bring your healing touch to all. We ask for prayers to those who have recently lost a loved one. We pray for the family of seven-year-old John Bean, grandson of Danny and Barb Bean, who lost his battle with cancer. We pray also for the family of Jeannie Knight, who also lost a battle with cancer. Grant all who mourn your comfort and surround them with your love and grace. We pray for our community of Savannah. Guide and direct us as your people to be peacemakers, whether it be in our homes, our schools, our places of work, or any of the places we touch the lives of others, show us how we can build a better community, one that supports the lives of others. Show us how to love and serve others we are in contact with each day. We offer prayers of gratitude for our soldiers around the world, particularly those in war zones whose lives are in danger. We ask that you surround them with your protection and calm their fears. We offer prayers of peace and your presence for their families as well. We pray for our community of faith, Asbury Memorial United Methodist Church. Show us ways as your church that we can become people of deeper faith and then how we can put that faith into Christian action. Show us how to be Christ to those who need to know him. There are so many needs, but your abundance has no bounds. Show us individually and corporately how we are to do our part and guide us not only to be people of Christian action, but people of Christian compassion. We, pray, we each pray this day for guidance. How do, we, how, how do we do our part in such a complicated world? There are so many conflicting voices telling us to go here and there. Help us to hear your guidance in all of the noise. Help us to listen for that voice from within us that we know comes from you. Remind us that your spirit resides within us and you call us to be your hands, feet, and love in the world. Remind us that when we hear the call to do something difficult, that you are with us. You are not only with us now, you are in our future. Help us to listen, to love, to have courage, and to act in your name. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught the first disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Tomorrow's 
forecast right after this. Everybody got their umbrellas? <laughs> Do you remember when we not only needed umbrellas to walk to church, but we needed them during church? <laughs> That's right, I forgot about that. The old roof had so many holes in it. The whole sanctuary had holes in it. It was really in bad shape. Um, people got sick because of the mold. It's really remarkable how people pulled together to raise money for the renovation. Can you believe it's been 10 years ago now? Wow. Randy told me that maintaining an old church like this is a constant job. This sanctuary is almost 100 years old. That's right. It was built in 1921, and our education building was built in 1954. I wish Alex Trebek would have asked you that question on job. <laughs> Well, I have another date for you, and remember to answer in the form of a question. November 18th. Hmm, November 18th. That is the last Sunday before Thanksgiving. True, but you forgot to answer in the form of a question. I have, okay. Um, what is Commitment Sunday? Very good. Uh, commitment Sunday is the Sunday that we um, consider and make our pledges for the coming year, our financial pledges for the coming year. Hey, I wonder if Helen's going to dress up like Tinkerbell to remind us this year. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> I think she kind of likes dressing up in that green outfit and wearing those big false eyelashes. <laughs> oh, and remember last year the Adams family came to church to remind us about Commitment Sunday. I kind of thought that lurch guy was cute. <laughs> Ooh, do we hear wedding bells in the future? Oh, kind of sound like it. You know what they say when you've been together long enough. Seriously, though, we need to be thinking about what we can give to Asbury in 2019. And praying about it, too. Remember, the cost of living goes up every year, and that really adds to the church's budget. And we want to continue adding programs and ministries and staff. I'm on the congregational care team, and we want to continue to do more for our, our people in our church and in the community. Alex and Barb, you're in the school system. Did you know that over 30 of our church members are either teachers or work in schools? And they need a place like Asbury to come to on Sunday to recharge for the week. Asbury really has made a big difference in my life. I don't know what I'd do without it. Ditto for me. Oh, look, Pat's about to come back on. I bet he'll be heading to Asbury after this. And welcome back from our commercial break. You know, while we were at the commercial, I was looking at the Doppler radar, and you know what? There's a big thunderstorm developing across the area. It looks like we're going to get three to five hours worth of rain this afternoon, maybe one to two inches worth. So, well, stay dry if you can. Hey, did y'all hear that? <laughs> I guess we'll be working on our tans today.
wonderful singing, <laughs> wonderful music. A few announcements before I begin the sermon, and we do want to continue to have the Bean family and the Knight family in our prayers. John Ashley's incredible battle and Jeannie Knight's incredible battle with cancer. You know, for Jeannie, I think they gave her two years to live, and she lived for eight years, so we're very thankful. We thank everyone who have brought items or given checks for the hurricane relief. The Tysons will be making a delivery to Florida either Tuesday or Wednesday, I believe, of this week, and we'll continue to collect items uh, for future deliveries. And if you, for more information about this ministry, uh, you can, there are information sheets about it at the Connection Corner that you can get during coffee hour. You heard about the youth selling Christmas trees. Uh, they're doing it early because they have to have the, uh, the number of trees that amount in by November 7th. So they're selling them to November 7th. The pickup date is Saturday, November 28th. I think I said one Sunday, 24th. It's November 28th. That's right, right? 28th? No, it's 24th. Okay, it's the 24th. Okay, thank you. Not the 28th. You get it earlier, the 24th, and that will be at Grayson Stadium. We thank the Sand Nats for helping us out. And you can pick them up, and again, that goes to our... Cut, cut, that's right. <laughs> Pecan Pe Pe and Honey Harvest is coming up November 17th. Is that right? It's the 17th. Is that right? And we need volunteers. Is that right? Okay. Sign up cards are in the Northex or at the Connection Corner. That good old Connection Corner. Asbury Honey, Heavenly Honey. If you don't know that story, the bees around here made it. Made it is that's on sale at the coffee hour, and we're still taking orders for that second book of mine, Wow Wisdom. And the books will be here December 2nd, and we'll have a book signing that day. Those of you who are in our new member class, I think I've heard we have about 20 folks in this new member class, and we're excited about that. Yay! Thank you. We will eat, have lunch in the choir room. And, um, but first, feel free to go to the coffee hour, buy some honey, whatever you want to mingle with folks. And then, if you'll get your food, and then go in the choir room. Preston Hodges, Kathy Hodges, Candace Jenkins will be there to help you out to get things started before I show up. Jerry Spears and Maria Waller, former names, where are you? Stand up for us. These two have been dating for three and a half years. They are now... Jerry and Maria Spears, they were married last Saturday. Congratulations. You know, I didn't realize, they got married last Saturday night, and they were at church last Sunday. I didn't see them, and I would have congratulated them, but I just assumed they wouldn't be at church the next morning. God bless you. Thank you for your commitment. Evelyn Bradley, where are you? You're in the back somewhere. Evelyn, right in that back row. She is so faithful to this congregation here every Sunday. Um, this past Thursday, I think we have the right number, celebrated number 87. Is that right? Wow. today. I want to thank Pat Prokop for letting us have a little fun with him today. 
Because in reality, we all respect the great work Pat has done and continues to do with the weather. We are constantly calling Pat here. How bad's the storm going to be? Should we cancel Wednesday night supper? Uh, so we really respect his work. I also appreciate the work Pat has done regarding climate change. Pat has long been trying to educate our community on the importance of taking care of our planet. And with the upcoming elections, both locally and nationally, I strongly encourage you to vote for people who take taking care of God's world seriously, okay? Speaking of that, we have a green team meeting this week. All right, is it Thursday? Is that right? Thursday? Thursday. Anybody's invited to that. This Friday in the New York Times, someone wrote these comments. My brain is overloaded and ready to explode over all that's being written about the coming elections and our political disaster. My advice, go to the movies. <laughs> Better yet, rent Singing in the Rain. That was in the New York Times on Friday. It would be hard to find a better feel-good musical than Singing in the Rain with songs like Make Them Laugh, Fit as a Fiddle, Moses Supposes, and Singing in the Rain with all of their incredible dance breaks. You can't find anything better to lift up your spirits. And like all classic musicals, Singing in the Rain includes a love story. This one is between a film star named Don Lockwood, who was played, of course, by the famous Gene Kelly. And the other, <laughs> got a Gene Kelly fan there, okay. <laughs> and the romance is between Don Lockwood and a budding new wannabe actress named Kathy Selden. And of course, Debbie Reynolds played her in the movie. In the 1985 Broadway musical, the role of Don was played by a guy named Don, a guy named Don Korea. Many people outside of New York wouldn't know that name, but back in the 1980s, people in the theater world knew Don as one of the great dancers in musical theater. He was perfect for the role, and some of you would know of Don's wife of 38 years, Sandy Duncan. That's Don's wife. The role of Kathy Selden in the Broadway musical was played by an actress named Mary D'Arcy. Sherry and I know Mary, had supper with her a couple of years ago. I worked with her husband, Carl, in Summerstock before I moved to New York. Carl and Mary came to our wedding, and I happen to have a story in my new book that involves Carl and Mary at our wedding reception. Most of you know someone who was in the 1985 Broadway production of Singing in the Rain because Sherry, my wife, was in the production. I wish she would have played Lena Lamont. She's very good at that. And she does too. And I'll get to that in a little while. Besides the traditional love story, the plot of the show revolves around the discovery of sound for motion pictures. It's dealing with the transition from silent films to what became known as talkies, or talking pictures. And as you might guess, this was not an easy transition. One of the funniest moments in the show is when they're trying to shoot a serious scene for the first time with a microphone, but they have all kinds of issues, everything from the microphone picking up unwanted sounds to people getting tangled up in its cord and even trying to find places to hide the microphone so it can't be seen. There were lots of challenges, failures, and miscues, but eventually things got better. It took a lot of work, but of course now we're blessed to have incredible movies with sound. Things are always changing, developing. Even our bodies are constantly changing. Science tells us that you and I get a new body every seven years. Not one cell, not one molecule, 
that was in your body seven years ago is there today. I'm excited because this happens to be my seventh and last year with this particular body. <laughs> I'm due for a new one next year. We know that change will occur in our lives. Good things will happen to us, bad things will happen to us. We will interact with wonderful people, build friendships, and then we will lose some friendships. People move away, people die. Things are constantly changing. Most of us can handle change okay if it is something positive in our lives, but the challenge, of course, is handling change when it's when it hurts, when it's difficult, when it's tough. How do we sing in the rain? So for today, let's imagine the phrase singing in the rain as a metaphor for successfully adopt, adapting to change, even embracing change especially when it involves something challenging and difficult. On the Apostle Paul's first trip to Europe, he and his friend Silas go to Greece and end up in a town called Philippi. And there, Paul meets a woman named Lydia who becomes the first European convert that we know of. So things start out well for Paul and Silas in Philippi, but it doesn't take long for them to get into some trouble. And I'm not going to go into why they were arrested. You can read about it in the book of Acts. But they end up being stripped of their clothing in front of a crowd, and then they are brutally beaten. Then they are thrown into prison. The guard is told to watch them carefully, so he decides to move them to the innermost cell, the dungeon. A first century prison without electricity would have been very dark. The innermost cell would have been darker than dark. And the two beaten and wounded men then have their feet put into stocks. It can't get any worse. What was Silas and Paul's reaction to having a really bad day? At midnight, the text says, at the darkest hour, they start singing, praying, and singing, and the text says that the other prisoners were listening to them. That's what you call singing in the rain. How were they able to sing during this incredibly difficult time? How were they able to remain positive and hopeful? When Sherry was cast in Singing in the Rain in 1985, you would think that she would have been on top of the world. You would have thought it was a good thing, but wouldn't anyone want to be on Broadway? But it was a very, very difficult time for Sherry. She was cast as something called the swing. A swing is similar to being an understudy, but there's a big difference. A, a person who is an understudy usually focuses on one particular role, usually a lead role in the show. A person who is a swing understudies everyone in the chorus. In Singing in the Rain, Sherry understudied 13 roles, 13 women. So if one of them got sick or went on vacation or to a wedding or to a funeral, then Sherry went on. The good part was that each of the 13 women did something similar in the show. The bad part was that each of the 13 women also did something very different. Most of the time, Sherry would not know if she was going on until 45 minutes before the show. She'd have to show up backstage every night because the stage manager could say, someone just called in sick, you're on. Most nights, Sherry didn't go on, 
But that made it even more challenging, more difficult. She never got to practice, never got to go over it. All the other cast members were getting to do it every night. It was becoming second nature to them, but Sherry didn't get to do that. So she would wake up each day and start worrying about having to be in the show that night. And the anxiety would grow and grow throughout the day. And then around 7.15, she'd usually find out that she wasn't going on. And then she could relax and enjoy the evening. Which is funny because typically she's a morning person. But because of the show, the only time she could relax and not have anxiety was at night. And then one night, I get a call from her. Billy... I'm going on. So I run, go get a ticket so I can see her in the show. She had talked about having to wear this really tall hat that was difficult to balance on her head. She was worried about it falling off. And sure enough, in one of the scenes, the girls come out wearing a hat that looked to be about seven feet tall. It was taller than Sherry was. And she got through the scene without the hat falling or without her tumbling into the orchestra pit. So I thought we were home free. And I told myself that surely if the girl she was going on for had something difficult to do in the show, they would switch it up so that one of the regular dancers would do it. So that Sherry, who never got to practice, didn't have to do it. It was at that time I see Sherry running to center stage into the arms of Don Lockwood, Don Korea, the main character. And Don picks Sherry up and lifts her high in the air that she is now totally vertical, not horizontal, vertical with her toes pointing to the heavens. He kept her in that position for two hours. <laughs> or for what seemed like two hours, I couldn't believe it. It was very impressive, one of those things that takes your breath away if you're in the audience watching it, especially if you know the girl being lifted never got to practice. No one else in the audience knew that the girl who was being suspended upside down from the ceiling had never gotten to practice and had been scared to death before the show. And when I saw her afterwards, I said, that was crazy. How did you do it? Weren't you scared? She said, no, not really. You see, Don is such a strong dancer. He's so steady, so consistent, so good with his technique. All I had to do was trust him and let go. He did most of the work. How were Paul and Silas able to sing in the rain, sing in the stocks, sing in the darkness? I think Paul's response would have sounded a lot like Sherry's. I can do it because God is so strong. God is so steady, so consistent, so good. All I have to do is trust God and let go. God will do most of the work. Paul, after all, is the one who wrote, if God is for us, who can be against us? Paul is the one who said, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor anything present, nor anything to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so the key to being able to sing in the rain is trusting God and God's love. Easier said than done, right? How do you learn to trust someone? You get to know them. And how do you get to know them? You spend time with them. 
You learn things about them, sometimes by reading about them, sometimes studying about them, and you learn about them from other people and how they help them. How do you learn to trust God? You get to know God. And how do you get to know God? You spend time with God. And you learn things about God. You read about God. You study about God. And you learn about God from other people and how God has helped them. When we're able to trust God, we not only can get through changes in life, we can embrace them. We can learn from them. We can grow. We can even celebrate them. One of our church members is 101 years old. Mae Johnson has seen a lot of changes in her life. In fact, I recently found out that Mae, it's funny I'm talking about her today, Mae had been a child actress in silent movies. There's a picture of little five-year-old Mae on the internet with the cast of a silent film called Silver Wings. When May was 80 years old, the Queens, New York native, moved to Savannah with her thick New York accent to live closer to her daughter, who was a member of Asbury. May felt like a fish out of water. She didn't know anyone. She thought she'd try the busy bees, would show up at one of their Monday groups, And so May carefully drove herself from her apartment by the Savannah Mall to the church. And after parking the car, and by the way, back then the busy bees met in the choir room, so you just opened the back door and there they were. But after parking the car, May began to get nervous about the whole thing as she walked to the door. And and she opened that back door and all of the women of the busy bees turned their heads towards the door to see who was there and May panicked and she shut the door, (laughs) got back in her car and drove home. But she didn't give up. She kept reaching out to people. She eventually became a busy bee and became part of other groups here at the church and she developed some very good friendships. She would later tell me as I got close to her that it took her a while to trust the love and hospitality she received here. She said that one of the things she had to get used to was all of the hugging and touching. (laughs) She said, we never did any of that where I came from. After being in Savannah a number of years, May's family moved from Savannah to South Florida, so May had to make another big change, had to make, had to make the move to, to Florida to join her family. After being in Florida for about four or five months, I received this letter from her, and remember, this is someone in her 80s. This part's in the book. Dear Billy, just a note to let you know that I am thinking of you and all the folks at Asbury. Also, I just had to let you know how the things I learned from you and the people at church have affected my life here in Florida. As you know, I am volunteering in the emergency room at University Hospital. She's volunteering in the emergency room in her 80s, getting about to hit 90. My responsibility is to reassure the patients when they come in that they will be getting the best care possible. I try to make them comfortable, bring a warm blanket if they're cold, bring coffee, a soda, or whatever to the patient's family. But the important thing I have learned from you and the folks at Asbury is the importance of contact. I check on them as often as I can reassure them with a touch on the shoulder, or so many of them reach out so that you can hold their hands. It calms them down when they are apprehensive. 
As I've told you, I was never a hugger or a toucher until I came to Asbury. And now, because I realized how comforting this approach to people can be, I can help people. Last week, I was walking past the bed of a new patient, a tiny African-American lady about 85 years of age. She motioned to me, and I went to her bed. I could barely understand her. She was so weak. But finally, I realized that she wanted water. I checked with a doctor and then brought her some water, held the cup while she drank from the straw. She was in the emergency room for a long, long time, and when I had a chance, I would stop and help her to drink. After they decided to admit her, I went back to her while she was waiting for her room to be prepared upstairs. She was a little agitated and in pain, and I, I held her hand. But suddenly, without thinking about what I was doing, I found myself running my fingers through her hair as I always did with my children when they were upset. As she drifted off to sleep, I could hear her say softly, thank you, oh thank you, thank you. And they wheeled her away. I as they wheeled her away, I suddenly realized how I have grown. Of course, I do other things, file reports, answer the phone, run errands, but I enjoy the contact with patients and their families the most. Give my love to everyone at Asbury May. May has lived her entire life embracing change even learning to be a toucher and a hugger in her 80s. She is living life in its fullness and making a difference in this world because she has learned to sing in the rain. Let us do likewise. Amen and amen. Let us now take this time to worship God with our tithes and our offerings.
for your blessing upon them and their Jews. Guide us by your spirit in this use. Amen. Amen. If you remain standing and turn in the insert to the insert for the litany, a learned to learner litany of transformation. I used to be learned. When I was learned, life was a quiz show. When I was learned, it was a question of how much I knew. When I was learned, knowledge was everything. I used to point my finger and pontificate. When I was learned, I used to think I was the best. When I was learned, I loved to talk. When I was learned, I had something to teach everybody. When I was learned, my life revolved around what other people thought about me. When I was learned, the power and mystery were in the big words. I put all my trust in what I could see. When I was learned, I knew where I was going.
was a wonderful way to wrap up our last God on Broadway season. Uh, one more? Oklahoma or something like that? Come on back next week for Kiki Boots. And the great. You know, last Sunday, somebody visiting said, I love what's printed, the litanies and things that are in the bulletin. I'm taking it home and we'll reflect on that during the week. A lot of times, you know, we do recycle these. That's great. We want to recycle it. But if you, I encourage you to take the, lit, the bulletin home because they're beautiful. This, this litany, a learned to a learner litany of transformation is something we should be reflecting on all the time. So I encourage you to take this with you home and use it in your personal study and reflection. God bless you. Go forth singing in the rain. In the name of God the Creator, in Christ the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.